Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio Discovering Geoglyph video. In this video we'll be looking at the Perlinoi macro. And this is an interesting macro because it combines the Voronoi fractal with the regular Perlin fractal and what it does is it combines the two so you get the Voronoi look but it has a controllable amount of noise from the Perlin fractal. So if you look at this, all of these are kind of familiar if you're uh, use the world machine they just have the scale of the fractal here and one more time I just want to apologize in advance if world machine does crash on me during the video because for some reason it's not liking any of the recordings works 100% just fine when I'm not recording but as soon as I start recording it crashes so to continue going on uh, this is just again just a nice little uh, uh, drop down thing for the name of what you're changing um, this is just the scale of the of the noise of the fractal, and then right here are the uh, usual um, options that you have inside of a World Machine for your Voronoi fractal. So if you so if I were to take this generator and the Voronoi generator here and look at it, they're just very familiar. So there's the scale, and here are the different types and uh, the distance function, the shape, so on and so forth. Everything is about the same, um, except for in the Perlinoi, they mixed a Perlin fractal with the Voronoi. So you have the options of F1 through F4, and then you have the options of a mixture between F2 and F1, and F3 and F2, so on and so forth. And then you have your cell types, which you know breaks up into a cellular pattern. Um, my favorite one is F4 and F2. Seems to be legit. So you have the pretty uh, familiar options, just the scale, the uh, cell, the types of the Voronoi here. So you have F1 through F4, and then you have a mixture of these cells together. Um, then you just have the uh, regular cellular cellular type um, fractals. My favorite one is the F2, 4 F2 one, just because I, I like the uh, the way it looks. Then you just have the shape option, and you know it just kind of changes the shape of the the noise, and then the seed, which is just the randomization factor. And then the output right here is there's either simple or complex, and these are actual um, erosion outputs. So just simple and complex just kind of looks like simple is a very small amount, and complex is a very large amount. So that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and build it. Then I'll show you what it looks like. And it's a really easy macro to throw in with a, a different type of generator. Because when you're using World Machine, you're not using, or and you are using Voronoi, you're most likely mixing it with an erosion node and a Perlin fractal anyways to kind of break up the cell patterns but still get those um, familiar uh, Voronoi look. So this is pretty much what we have. And you can get some really cool looking uh, shapes if you were to put an inverter on this. And then a clipping uh, device. So if we uh, uh, put an inverter on this. And this is another uh, pretty typical um, thing to do when you're making rivers inside of World Machine. I don't have the right setup in the Perlinoi, but I'll just kind of show you a little bit here. So this is the inverter, it inverts it, and then in the filter you just put in a clipping, or a clamp, anyways. It's gonna be a clip, so we can cut off the top parts. And then right here, the Voronoi actually helps create those uh, patterns that you know you used for a, uh, a river. But anyways, that's the Perlinoi. It's just very easy. Voronoi mixed with Perlin Fractal. Nothing much there. Um, other than you get some really cool looking stuff. So the next one we're going to be talking about is Perlin Knox. And this is another great one because it, it's, it helps you create large expanse landscapes. So what Perlin Knox is really good to use in is maybe you need a nice large um, landscape to work with uh, that has a lot of detail and noise but something that you can still grow on so that's what Pearly Knox is good for so if we look at the scale here you can see that small amounts is just really noisy um, but it's not necessarily very large mountainscapes 
So it's really easy to make expansive worlds with this. So imagine if you had, for just a second, uh, instead of 8 kilometers, you had something like 65 kilometers. And let's go in here and play with the scale. And I didn't really necessarily play with this too much before, but I mean, these are the extents of which it'll affect the landscape is what I'm assuming, and what I'm seeing. And see it is just the randomness, and it's really hard to see right here because it's just so small. Okay, there we go. Now I'm starting to get something different. So we'll go ahead and I'll just take a look at this at you know a really large landscape. Hold crazy, very large. Okay, so now you can see all that tiny little detail that um, it's generating. But maybe 65 kilometers is a little large. So let's go back down to eight, and uh, well, we'll just go back inside here and mess with the scale again because that's where we're going to get most of the detail at, anyways. We'll turn the extents down and the recursion up. There we go. So this is back to defaults almost. And there we go. Okay, let's look at that. And recursion is kind of like the uh, just the regular terracing, um, but this one is on a smaller scale, so it's not. Too much, too harsh of a of a terracing, and there we go. Very easy. You can see how if you import this into like a game, this is going to be like a starting point. Your character would have to travel through all of this to get all the way over here. It's and it just makes really large um, floor areas, I guess, ground areas. So let's go ahead and mix this with something. Cause that's usually what you would want to do, and let's mix it with. Um, Let's mix it with high desert. I like high desert. It looks really good. Um, combiner like that. And what we'll want here is something like screen. And then we can just kind of play with the differences here. And you can see where it's not really affecting the height map too much for the high desert macro, but it's still bringing in the detail from the pearly Knox. So let's, let's play with this a little bit more with this locked so we can see our changes. There we go. Let's bring in a little bit more randomization. I'm going to turn the recursion down just a bit. And let's build this. Let's see what this looks like. I'm just going to keep High Desert as the default. Not really a big reason to change that up. Okay. So now you can see all of this landscape down here that's not from the high desert but maybe let's try something different so instead of high desert let's try mountains perhaps which is this one and save Okay, we'll just keep that as the base or as the default as well. And before we try something else, let's take this pearly Knox and let's add um, like an equalizer or something to it. Let's see what that does. Holy crazy, too much. So we need a little bit more control. So bias and gain ought to do it. Let's lock the preview and let's play around with this. And what the bias and gain does is that it just gives us a little bit more control over our fractal on the pearly Knox. So you can really see it coming in right here. Okay. And let's try something. Let's try an inverter. 
Holy crazy. The inverter just completely destroyed it, so we don't want an inverter. There we go. Uh, and then just after that, we just need some erosion. And it's always a good idea to use erosion, so we will. <clears throat> but I think before we do that, we're going to use a kill spike. Not the default kill spike, because that is too much, is what I find sometimes. No. F, there we go. And we'll just change this to be good with terraces. Just because it gives us erosion, it's not too harsh and takes not that long to build. Okay, so let's look at it. Oh, too much erosion. Um... On a small scale like this, the good with terracing erosion preset is pretty rough. Uh, it still looks good though. Um, it does have that regular world machine look to it, which we would use NeoFlow to get rid of and have it look, you know, a little bit better. But let's just get rid of that. We'll keep Kill Spike and we'll just build it without the erosion. Okay, there we go. There's our mountain, and that's our pearly knox. So that's good. Um, I just want to look at it again without anything else other than itself. And there we go. Looks really good. I like it. Some really good uses for it. I would probably put in a little, um, maybe a uh, blur filter on here so it's not so sharp in these little wacky areas like right here which look really good but at the same time I or I could just play with the settings a little bit or whatever so there's there's pearly Knox um so those that's uh that's the perlino class no let's see that's the per the pearly the pearly noi and the perlino and the pearly Knox. there's a lot of pearly stuff so pearly noi and uh perlinox is what we covered today uh and these are the descriptions so i'll just leave them on there a little bit so you can read them and there's that one you can just pause the video and read it so I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and visit www.pwnstudio.com for more 3D goodness. Thank you, and have a nice day.